Hey guys, Jambo Comics back again with a feast for your eyes. That's right. Got a lot of good stuff to show you from every comic age just about it. And some things that are not quite comics. So stick around. We'll check it out together. And let me show you some of the fun stuff I've got today. Um, I got some stuff from a friend of mine. And he uh, goes to comic shops and goes to a lot of flea markets and yard sales and things like that and sometimes he comes up with some stuff that he has extras of like this or stuff that he thinks i like and this is just a uh book book about the pulps it's kind of like a checklist it just had a lot of really cool photographs of the old pulp covers in it was why i wanted it and yeah he gave me that so I just thought it was really cool and uh, it might start me down that rabbit hole where I'm looking for a lot more pulps than what I was so a lot of really cool covers on those things man they're fantastic and he got this for me also nice Marilyn Monroe photo book yeah it's a big hardbound book it had some really cool photographs in it from back in the day. Just like some pinup stuff of Marilyn, as you can see. It was very cool. And uh, so he got me that. He got me a few, like, digest size pulps. And these were from 1957. I just thought they were really cool. I haven't put them in any bags or boards or anything yet. Uh, yeah, these had UFOs on them, so I thought they were really cool. Uh, Fate Magazine, he said they were kind of rare, but, uh, yeah. I myself prefer the bigger pulp magazines, but, yeah, that's pretty cool, though. Nice sci-fi cover on it there. The U.S. aircraft trying to shoot down the UFO there. Pretty cool, so he had several of those, actually. He got for me. I like that one. Don't know why, but yeah, I like that one. It's pretty cool. This one was kind of wild. It had a uh, old VW Beetle, so yeah, you could tell it was like in the late 50s. It was 1957 also. Got the headlights on the UFO there, so very cool. And so that's just some of the stuff he found for me. And I appreciate that. But uh, picked up a few things from comic shops and stuff like I normally do. And this is just about the only new book I get. Vampiris Carmilla. And this is issue number 10. And I'm trying to remember who that was. Jones or Kelly that did the uh, cover on that one. So, yeah. Conan type character there. Just thought it was pretty cool. Kind of a Frazetta type cover. So pretty cool. Got this. It was a buck. I didn't have this one. This is number two of Starstream from the old Whitman series that they did. I think there was four of those. So I had one. And one of the other ones, either three or four. And that one was number two, so... I thought I had a cool space cover. I like the guy floating out here in space. Just looks like he's slicing up the asteroid there or something. It's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, Star Street. 79 cents for all that sci-fi goodness from back in the day. Very cool. Got this. It was cheap. I think it was five bucks. Uh, Strange Tales 143. Uh, nice Nick Fury. Uh, Jack Curry cover there. Very cool. It was in decent shape. Five bucks, man. You just can't beat that. I'll take all those I can find for five bucks. And this was five bucks also. It was a uh, X-Men 156 with a Star Jammers cover. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, when I find those X-Men books like that back in the Bronze Age, when Claremont was writing them, I'll try to pick some of them up. So, yeah. Take that. 
and I don't know if I've shown you guys this or not, but it was, I got it recently, and uh, it's just a Marvel Super Heroes number 26, but the reason uh, I was attracted to this book was because of the Jack Kirby Hulk there. I always liked that uh, uh, picture he did there of the Hulk leaping across the countryside there, evading the jet airplanes. I just thought it was really cool. Uh, really cool pose, nice Kirby art, and uh, of course there's some Daredevil on there also. But uh, yeah, these had just uh, several several stories in them, and they were all really cool if you wanted to go back and read some of the old Marvel stuff. So good to do that with those. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? I got a nice Wonder Woman that I got really cheap. And that was a dollar, I think, also. So, and it was the Whitman variant. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that makes it uh, worth anything more. It's probably actually worth less. And I don't even know what, what number that is now, but uh, yeah. Nice Wonder Woman. This was during the Bronze Age. It was about 77, 78, something like that. Right after the Wonder Woman TV program. So... Just kind of reminds me of Linda Carter, so very cool. Glad to have that. And got a nice uh, Golden Age Dell here for you. And it's a Tom and Jerry. It's from 1953. And I think that is 113 of the Tom and Jerry series. So, yeah. Just a pretty cool cover there. Pretty funny. It's Tom on the sled and jerry and i can't remember the little tiny mice the mouse's name but yeah passed him up on the rat trap there very cool there's my favorite guy right there droopy I like droopy and the next book was really cool i was glad to get this i got it at a good price i, I gave 30 bucks for it but they're just kind of rare there's only two of those that dell did Number one and number two. This is number two. It actually has the better cover, I think, of the two. Because it's got a bigger picture of Barbara Eaton there. As I Dream of Jeannie. And, uh, yeah, just very cool. Always liked that. Always liked Barbara Eaton in that series. Thought it was funny. Uh, just always thought that Major Nelson misused her. And didn't use her to her full potential. Let's put it that way, so... Just a very cool, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to find the number one now. I think I've had those at one time. Don't have them anymore, but now I have a number two. So it means I've got to get number one now. Very cool. I liked it. I Dream of Genie. And another one of these. And I thought I wrote that down, but I did not. What number that was. Space Family Robinson, Lost in Space, and just a very cool alien robot kind of people there on the cover. And just uh, like that cover, it's in decent shape. And I'll, I knew I didn't have it, so I will add that to the run and mark it off the list and try to remember what it was. But <laughs> yeah, we're working on that run and. Hopefully get those knocked out before too much longer. Here's a nice photo cover of Maverick comic from Dell. And it was cheap. It was like a buck for that. And it had like a sticker up there at one time. Chip out. Spine's real rough. But uh, yeah, it's from 1960, I think. And just a uh, nice photo car cover of uh, James Garner and Jack Kelly. Um, this is number 11. I did write the number on there. Number 11 from 1960, Maverick. And this was a nice 100th anniversary issue of Tomahawk. And uh, yeah, pretty cool cover for Tomahawk. They were kind of getting a little wilder with the covers. <laughs> at that point and yeah I just liked it and uh, yeah it was a pretty good book pretty good read the uh, spine was a little messed up on it but hey I didn't give much for that either I think a couple three bucks something like that so yes I'll take it 
And we've got a nice Golden Age book next from Avon and Bill Hickok. And this is number 11. And uh, had a beautiful Kinsler cover on it. And I just like the colors and everything on it. Um, the bank robber trying to take the money and the damsel there. So a little bit greedy. But I think Bill Hickok's going to have something to say about that. Uh, just just love those Avon Westerns, man. You just can't beat them. I mean, they're just fantastic. The artwork and everything. Um, Avon and Magazine Enterprises, uh, they had some of the best Westerns that there were, I think, back in the day. And, uh, yeah, you can see that for yourself right there. Beautiful art. Okay, and... Uh, before I show you my last book, I'll show you a couple of things that uh, recently I went and did a comic con in uh, Frankfort, Kentucky with our old friend Bub from Bub's World. And Bub is quite the guy, man. He's very cool and super generous for one thing because he had uh, got himself a Kickstarter and he thought of your old friend Jambo here and signed me up and got me a Kickstarter too. And this is from Bud Root and it's a Kickstarter, I think, for uh, Cavewoman. And uh, yeah, this is just like a, a sketchbook or some of his artwork from some of the covers and stuff and interior work he's done. And just just great stuff inside of it. Um, it's good. Herbs. This is like a preliminary to the... Uh, let me show you the back of it first because it has a beautiful picture of Betty and that's Dave Stevens there and that's Bud Root's version of Dave Stevens and Betty Page. So, very cool. Dave and Betty, it says down there, Christmas time, 2008. Let me pop this one open. I think I can show you a little bit of it because it was very cool and Bub... Man, I really appreciate that. It was super nice of you, super fantastic. And let me show you this because it was signed and numbered. Yeah, there's only so many of these around, so they're very cool. Bob, you're quite a guy, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, let me show you this. It's got some of the superhero girls. I can show you these because they're pretty cool. There's Catwoman. I guess that's Julie Newmar. And just very cool. There's Supergirl. Very cool also. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should show you that one or not. <laughs> yeah, here's a cool Bride of Frankenstein. I don't want to bend this too much. And I think this is Budroot's version of Betty and Veronica. And I don't know if that's chili or uh Cheryl, I can't remember, the red-headed girl from the Archie series. But, uh, yeah. Very cool. Let's see what else. Yeah, here's a cool picture. Everybody from Gilligan's Island and Batman. The Munsters, the Adams family. So, yeah. Ginger or Marianne? Hmm? That was very cool. Anyway. Uh, yeah, more of this, can't show you that, <laughs> just 
fantastic, man. Bub, that was super nice of you, buddy. And I really do appreciate that. That was one of my favorite things that I got. And I'll treasure it, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll show you the second one, but I can't show you anything on that because it's a little bit more risque. Let's just put it that way, so. <laughs> it changed the title up there a little bit, too. So, anyway, yeah. Bud Root and all his glory. Thank you, Bub, from Bub's World. Super fantastic of you, brother. And uh, finally, my last book. I got it the very same con that we set up at. And um, I actually sold a few books to finance that book because I didn't want to spend a bunch of money. You know, I was there to try to make a little money. And so I took money from some of the books I sold and I got this. I was really glad to get this. This is all top and uh, it's like an anthology book of uh, a lot of the Fox publication heroes and stuff from the time period. A lot of good girl art stuff inside of it. Had Rula inside of it which was yeah you know I love Rula. I had Jojo uh, the Con King of the Congo and um, had some Phantom Lady stuff in it. That's right Phantom Lady and Blue Beetle. So all that inside and I was glad to get that. I love that cover on that one. That is number 13 and it is from 1949. Uh, let's see what else I can tell you about this. Of course you know it's got Matt Baker art and Jack Kamen art in it also. I think that's a Matt Baker cover and just beautiful man. Just cannot beat that. Uh, it had a little problem with the spine. The staples were loose. And I think it was trimmed a little bit on the right side there. But these things were just, they're expensive. I mean, if you don't believe me, look them up online. Check them on eBay. They're just very expensive. So I was glad to get that at the price I got it at. And uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic book, man. You just cannot beat this. I have... Um, this is a reprint of this issue here. I think this is number 14. And because I don't want to damage that one, I will show you some of the uh, interiors of this one. Because this is just a reprint. You can see that Fox always put the first page of the story on the back of the front cover. So they were super cheap and uh, <laughs> tried to fit everything in on uh, what paper they put in the books and stuff and yeah there's Jojo and I'm going to show you some more and this one has a Phantom Lady story in it also so yeah this is a great anthology and I mean you just can't I mean where else can you get Phantom Lady and Rula all in the same book. And like I said, sometimes you got like a, uh, you got a nice Blue Beetle story or something like that in there also. And I just love them, man. I'll take all those I can find if I can afford them. And let's see. Nope. This one unfortunately does not have the blue beetle story in it but uh yeah it's fantastic and you know what guys i'm gonna pop that out i'll show you i'll just try to be delicate with it because like i said it's from 1949 and although it doesn't look too bad it's not the best of shape cover is loose so there we go I mean like I said it was trimmed on that right side there we go there's the interior of the front page and the splash page of the Rula story and you can see man it's just great good girl art throughout these things 
and here's the Phantom Lady story. Some beautiful Matt Baker art there. Sandra Knight turning into Phantom Lady down there. And Mean Fox was probably maybe the best at good girl art and their titles back then at least in that time period and there's some phantom lady bondage over there so yeah let me show you the blue beetle Blue Beetle. So, yeah. A lot of girls in the 90s and <laughs> jungle girls and stuff like that. And some great ads on the back page that's very cool so anyways guys that is it that is the haul super glad to get that and uh, yeah I'll set it right there because it is a beauty and uh, thank you guys for coming by I really appreciate it um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, hit the thumbs up if you like the video. I always appreciate that. Uh, leave me a comment, guys. I will get back to you. Love chatting with you guys. And as the beautiful Barbara Eden says, subscribe. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.